Are you looking to build a new gaming PC, but you're not too sure which type of CPU cooler you should be going with? Well, if that is the case, this video should help you out. In this video, we're going to take a look at the stock cooler that your CPU comes with. Now, there's a big asterisk to that. Some CPUs don't come with them, and some CPUs come with very different types of heatsinks, so we'll talk about that in a second. We're also looking at the relatively budget air tower cooler. So, in this case, this is the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim. Comes out around about the sort of four pound mark and is the kind of the average type of CPU cooler you're going to see on the sort of budget builds and then we've also got a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. Now this is definitely the higher end this is uh, depending on which one you get the sort of 80 to 100 plus pound mark. Uh, this one is the Coolmaster Master Liquid 240 and it's actually a very nice one uh, so we're going to kind of have a look at all of the testing and then kind of give you my, my kind of recommendation. Now the CPU I'm testing with is the Ryzen 2700X. That's because it kicks out a decent amount of heat but at the same time comes with a good stock cooler so we can test with that and also it kicks out a decent and very replicable amount of heat for each test so I'm happy to kind of give a, a bit of a thumbs up for the numbers here. I'm also using a Fantex P350X with the tempered glass side panel on unlike you see here uh, for the testing with the standard 120mm fan normally as a front intake although because of the, the positioning and space requirements for the 240mm radiator we had to put that on the front so the 120mm is now used as an exhaust for that one but either way we still have the same amount of overall kind of intake or exhale if you like uh, except for obviously with the radiator giving you that extra bo uh, bonus. We also have a GTX 1060 6 gig Strix in here for the testing as well that is obviously going to kick out a good amount of heat into the case itself as it is an open design as opposed to a blower style but that's meant to replicate real world gaming use so hopefully it will be a bit more of a, a kind of real world test as opposed to just running Prime 95 and giving you a specific kind of result for just the specific coolers without any GPU load. So because we're using the Ryzen 2700X that means that the stock cooler we're going to be testing with is literally the beefiest stock cooler on the market. This is the Wraith Prism. It is a massive uh, kind of four heat piped thing. Um, it it is, as I said, one of the best stock coolers on the market uh, and really kind of uh, should be uh, a bit of a slightly biased result in terms of stock coolers, but we'll come into that as we kind of go through the results. As I mentioned, the air tower that we're using is the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim and the uh, AIO cooler is the Coolmaster Master Liquid 240. If you want to check out either of these or the 270X, I'll leave links in the description down below. Now the testing I was doing was actually Unigen Heaven. It's technically not a game but it runs on a game engine and it's a very replicable result and often gives me a pretty good idea of how hot the CPU and GPU will get under most gaming loads but it's a load that I can leave it on and run in the background while doing other things so that's why I'm using it. Now in terms of the temperatures starting off with the Wraith Prism the stock cooler in this test we're looking at 72 degrees average that's Celsius with an 81 degree maximum. Now this does get pretty hot of course bear in mind that the CPU is not overclocked mostly because I'm using a stock cooler here and also because the 2700X can be a little bit hard to push much further than it already goes so there's a, a bit of leeway there but obviously with 72 degrees that is actually a pretty respectable number but the 81 is, is probably a little bit on the high side. I would also mention that the noise that the cooler produces is fairly high it's something that you'll definitely notice even with the case all you know kind of closed up so just bear that one in mind. Moving on to the air cooler, I'd mentioned that this uh, Be Quiet unit is very similar to a lot of the other kind of very similar single tower heat sinks that you can get. So things like Coolmaster, Master Air 4s and things like that. So anything around this sort of price point with, you know, sort of 4-ish uh, heat pipes and a decent amount of sort of heat sink material to it is probably going to perform fairly similarly. Although feel free to check out specific reviews for specific units you're looking at. Now the temperature that this one got was a 67 degree average with 76 degree maximums. This is a decent little bit down. Obviously, it's not uh, a huge, ma you know, massive jump. But of course, do bear in mind that this heatsink is kind of uh, one of 
the best, if not the best stock killer out there. So uh, it kind of plays a little bit slightly uh, in the favor of the, the stock key sync here. I would expect that with even the Wraith Spire, you're, I would expect that the 2700X would be running closer to 80, 80 degrees full time, whereas this one would be running closer to that 67 degree uh, kind of average. And finally, moving on to the AIO, the same kind of message as the air cooler is that this one is uh, kind of obviously a representative sample for 240 mil uh, AIO coolers. You can obviously get smaller, you know, 120 mil ones, which will perform a little less well. And uh, of course, this one will perform uh, as a decent kind of representative sample for 240 mil coolers. But feel free to check out specific reviews to see how well, say, uh, Corsair H100 IV2 will do for you instead of this one or anything else in between. So the 240 mil all in one liquid cooler was running at 61 degrees average with a 65 degree maximum. Now that's nice to see that the maximum is a, even a little bit lower than the air cooler and obviously running at that 60 degrees is obviously pretty good to see. It was a lot quieter, especially than the stock cooler, although the air cooler actually was, was pretty decent in terms of its noise level as well. Although I would mention that this, uh, the AIO cooler does leave a lot more room for overclocking. So if you were interested in pushing your chip a little bit further, then this is where you want to go. So what's the conclusion here? Well, if you just want a cooler that will work decent enough for your chip, but you're not really planning on pushing it or you're kind of trying to save a little bit of money, then especially if you're going with the new Ryzen chips that come with pretty decent coolers, you know, relative to the chip you get, then it's actually a pretty decent shout to start with. If you then want to overclock in the future, you can then go for either air or, you know, liquid cooling in the future. But if you want to keep that budget nice and low, then if you're going with those chips, it's just fine. If you are going with an Intel chip, especially one of the K series, they don't come with stock heat sinks, so you will need to pick up a heat sink for your CPU. And in that case, again, if you're keeping your budgets low, then a simple air tower will do you just fine. Now, if you have a little bit more money to your build and you've already spec to all the specific, you know, components like your CPU and your GPU, the, the ones that you want to get, and you've got a little bit of extra cash available, then sure, go grab an air cooler. It will be a little bit quieter, it will perform a little bit better, and depending on which one you get, you might even have a little bit more room to overclock in the future, so that's always good to know. And if you're planning on overclocking your CPU a good amount, then an AIO cooler is the thing I would recommend. Now there is a bit of an asterisk here as the high-end air heat sinks will also do a fantastic job and will be almost, if not more, quiet than an AIO unit. So things like the NHD15 from Noctua or even the uh, very large, uh, I think it was a Dark Rock uh, coolers from Be Quiet, they will all perform very similarly to large AIO coolers. And while they are pretty heavy, pretty large and a lot of strain on your motherboard, they can, as I said, be potentially cheaper, cooler and um, again, just as quiet. Now, of course, that is my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Which cooler would you recommend for a budget build or someone who's a pro overclocker? Would you recommend an AIO or a large tower heatsink? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to leave that down there too. Uh, and otherwise, that is pretty much it. As I said, if you want to check out any of the coolers here or the 2700X, is it's actually a really nice chip. And I'll leave links to those in the description down below. If you want to support the channel, keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, then check out the Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links. I really appreciate it if you can click on those before you buy stuff from those places and it massively helps me out. You can also check out the Patreon link where you can support me directly, the Discord if you want to join the community and have a chat with everyone there, and otherwise check out the other videos over here. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button too, and uh, with the bell notification icon thing, because apparently that's necessary. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.